I came to New York City in search of the truth of rock and roll. This allure. The call of Joey Ramone was too tantalizing, and I hadn't lived in Brooklyn even for one week before succumbing to a debilitating LCD sound system obsession that rendered me trance-like. I mean, half comatose on a M train for three days non-stop. When I came to and switched to the J's so as to be dropped directly underneath Bowery Ballroom, I found myself wrapped in skinny black Levi's and leather jackets so tight it nearly gave me a center part. Like a swan, I dove into the scene deeper and deeper and I watched, I learned, I mimicked the ways of the local musicians and their rituals, standing in a small circle outside the venue, speaking in monotones, maintaining eye contact for no less than four seconds, no more than six, in an effort to achieve maximum chillness. Once we had brought it down to a righteous 49 degrees, not too cold to ruin a hang, but certainly devoid of any support from the night air, the vibe crystallized around us in an aura that can only be described as fucking sick. sick, sick, sick. Diglets became a dub trio, so to speak. Well, dub septet to be precise, but my drift. After a healthy trading of Instagram handles and a brisk verbal joust in which we competed to see whose bedroom studio rig was the most versatile, we completed the ceremony with the exchange of bro hugs and relaxed yet loving waves as we broke to crawl back to our respective trains of choice, each of which would take us meandering throughout Manhattan and Queens, yet inevitably I'll end up back at the same Myrtle Ave JMZ in Brooklyn anyway. I called the night a success and hoped that by the time I reached my apartment once more, it was still under my own lease and not yet at John Varvatos.